Hey guys, Troy here, getting ready to upload this video about uh, like what the best worship guitar is and uh, just really getting some stuff off my chest that was on my heart. Uh, it's meant to encourage you. So if it does that, uh, I'm glad. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. Um, but when I'm editing it down, I'm like, this is just a babbling mess. <laughs> so if you get all the way through it, uh, that's great. Thanks a lot. And I do hope it provides some encouragement to you. So here we go. Hey everybody, Troy here. Today I thought I'd do a bit of real talk. I uh, see a lot of videos out there, a lot of questions and videos trying to answer the question of, you know, what's the best guitar for worship? And really, you can extend it to anything. What's the best this for worship? What's the best that for worship? Uh, but really, I want to answer the question with my thoughts of what's the best guitar for worship? I'm not going to play guitar at all during this video, so I'm not even in my music room. I brought this just as a something to hold on to because I feel weird. Um, and it's a guitar related video, so I should have something guitar related, I guess. But uh, I'm going to try to answer that question for you. All right, so if you're the guy that's going to bring a strat to worship, play in a neck pickup and just say, this is my tone, I'm doing what I want, and I don't care what the song sounds like, I don't care what they want from me, I'm going to be a trailblazer and just make up my own parts and play how I want, this video is not for you. You've already found the guitar that works for you. Uh, this video is for the person that's saying, hey, I, I play five songs on a Sunday, and many times that means I'm trying to cover two or three different guitarists' tone and capture the essence of that tone and deliver it in a song on a Sunday. So that's the purpose of this video. So how do we start with this stuff, man? I mean, there's so many guitars out there, and uh, I think uh, a lot of times guys get into the rat race and they're not even sure what they're chasing. Um, so I think we need to step back and ask ourselves the question is, what does my church need from me, right? So if my church wants me to play spontaneously all the time, they don't really care um, about sounding like the record and they're not really focused on adhering to the structure of the song or anything like that, then you can really bring whatever you want, you know, play whatever you want as long as it's quiet and sounds good. But if your church is playing to a click track and you're trying to mimic the recording as close as possible, as controversial as that may be, keep those comments away from this video. It's not what it's about. If we're trying to do that, then it requires some thought and we need to really, really think about this and, and dissect it and figure out what's going to work best. So where that brings us then is we need a guitar that's going to cover a broad range of tones, right? We need a guitar that's going to cover a lot of ground. And to me, a solid body guitar does that. Um, a hollow body has a very distinct sound, a very awesome sound, but it belongs in a certain place. And for some worship songs, it's amazing, but for others, it's not. Whereas I feel like the solid body, we can attack those songs that are played with a hollow body guitar and get a decently convincing tone um, better than when we flip that scenario and try to play a hollow body all set long. Again, my personal opinion. We also need to consider our pickup selection too, right? So a single coil pickup is going to be noisy. Uh, it's going to be very articulate and it's, you're going to have a hard time getting a lot of beef out of it unless you're playing a telly with the tone rolled back a bit. So the telly is kind of the exception there, but on the whole, single pi single coil pickup is is going to cover less ground than say a humbucking pickup. P90 pickup is going to be awesome, but for most of us, it's probably going to be too noisy, just like a single coil pickup in our church setting. So, like my church is wired terribly, and if your church isn't, then you are blessed and congratulations, because I'd be grabbing a set of P90s and just going to town. But my church is not wired that way, so a humbucking pickup to me is. It's absolutely necessary. So I don't want a humbucking pickup that's too fat sounding because it's hard to make that fat sounding humbucking pickup kind of uh, thin out and sound more articulate. I want a humbucking pickup that sounds pretty close to a single coil pickup because it's still gonna have the benefits of humbuckers. It's never gonna lose the benefit of humbuckers in that it's quiet and covers a broad range of sound. But if we can get it closer to a single coil, we've actually increased the versatility of this pickup because we can take the tone knob and roll it down, thicken things up a bit, crank the tone knob wide open, and it gets that really close to a single coil, very articulate type tone. Also, you want to consider if the, the volume knob, how that's going to affect, uh, actually on this guitar, that's the volume knob, weird enough. Um, the volume knob, how that's going to affect the tone. So if we roll back the volume, will it clean up well, or will it lose highs and not clean up well? Ideally, we'd like a volume knob set up where we roll it off, doesn't lose any high end, and it's going to clean things up really, really well. So what you've done there by choosing the solid body guitar with humbucking pickups that are close to single coils is we've taken the guitar and we've like stretched it out so we can cover 
a broad range so the spectrum gets larger and we can live in more places in it in my opinion with that setup all right, so where does that leave us then? You know, what kind of guitars do we have to choose from from there? And I would say you can find a Squire Tele that sounds amazing. You pick up enough of those things and it's going to sound great. Throw some new pickups in there, like some Lawler El Reos or uh, Bare Knuckle Stormy Mondays, like a nice low output PAF style humbucking pickup. As long as the frets aren't sticking out, the neck is straight, get some decent action out of it, a Squire Tele can do wonders. Um, you can go up as high as a Sir Alt-T Pro, a Veritas Portlander, uh, you name it, man. I mean, there's a bajillion guitars out there. Um, K-Line makes really nice stuff. MJT makes really nice stuff. Grosh makes really nice stuff. Fender can still make some nice stuff. So you get the point. What I'm saying here is put your hands on enough guitars. It doesn't have to be 5000 bucks. It can be a $200 guitar. I've seen some guys make a Squire Tele sound amazing. Just absolutely amazing. So don't get hung up on how much it costs. Get hung up on what it can do and what you're trying to accomplish. So uh, a cool example of this to me is uh, our worship leader at church. His name is Josh. And he plays an Ernie Ball Music Man, which is like not on the list of any, you know, approved worship guitar uh, list, I guess. Ernie, Ernie Ball, I think it's like a John Petrucci model or something like that, if I even say his name right. But I think it's like a shreddy guitar, right? So we're supposed to do all this stuff on it. And he, uh, when he plays that thing, I actually listened to him this morning because I didn't play this morning. Dude, he sounded amazing. He plugged that thing into his Kemper and it sounded incredible. Just absolutely incredible. So he, he chose a guitar. He has bare knuckles, Stormy Mondays in his. So a solid body guitar with bare knuckles, Stormy Monday pickups. Um, and just was very thoughtful about where his volume was and the, where his pickup selector was and all that stuff. And he sounded great absolutely amazing so that's a really good example of like don't get hung up on what all the guys are using get hung up on what you need to do and then have a good understanding of what accomplishes that goal i think that's the biggest thing so that's really it um the purpose of this video again was not to like show off guitars that i own or um try to convince you of the proper way to choose a guitar it's just more trying to liberate you from getting caught up in the rat race and you know, we need to understand what we're trying to accomplish before we even go after anything, really. All right, so that's it. That's my thoughts on how to choose a worship guitar, uh, whatever that means. So the best guitar for worship that you can. You need to cover a broad range of sounds, and that's my advice for doing that. Really, what I want to encourage you to do here is, like, stop getting hung up in the rat race of what everyone else is using. Um, I like Veritas guitars. I like the company. So I'm at an age where I can support people that... Um, are that I believe in that I believe in their purpose so I spend the money for those guitars because I believe in the purpose that Veritas stands for uh, more than say a Fender or someone like that and I have the means that I can do that I'm you know I'm middle-aged I'm established in my career if you're 17 and you don't have you know your your career established yet or you're middle-aged and you're transitioning careers or just don't have the means to purchase that kind of stuff don't get down on yourself about that man like don't look at what you see on YouTube and Instagram and start thinking that you're any less of a guitar player, that you can contribute to the kingdom any less. I would hate for you to think that. I know a guy, I'll call him out right now, Joe McDaniel. He's uh, from around where I live, has a Squire, Telly, and a Kemper. And dude will play circles around just about anybody I know. And he sounds phenomenal. Phenomenal. So it's not about the brand of the guitar. It's about what the guitar can do and a $200 guitar can sometimes do the things that a $5,000 guitar can do. You just have to know what you need it to do. But ultimately, as always, this thing is about Jesus, man. Like stop chasing the gear and idolizing the gear. It's about Christ. So we aim to glorify him because he's the only one that deserves the glory. It's not the guitar player that you look up to. It's him. It's Jesus and what he's done for us. So what we aim to do is bring him glory, bring joy to his people, and bring salvation to those that don't know Christ yet. So choose a guitar that's going to help that happen. And in order for that to happen, you need to make quality sounds with it. In order to make quality sounds with it, you need to know what quality is in the context of what you're doing, what your church needs you to do to positively contribute to a worship gathering. So I can go on this or go on about this all day. I'm so sorry for rambling. If you made it this far, thank you. And I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But uh, signing off, Troy here. Just want to talk real talk with you today. Adios, guys.